Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Blue and welcome back to Meta. This is the Guild Wars 2 esports podcast where we talk all about the scene, the game, and everything that's PvP related in the Guild Wars 2 world. Once again, my name is Blue. I'm your host for today. Today we are joined by three players, all from the North American servers, and starting off with the player below me. It's getting Magic Toker. How are you doing today, Magic Toker? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Magic Toker is a thief from the North American WTS champion team, the Abjured, and he'll be joining us today. We have Phantom. Hey, Mr. 2v1. <laughs> yes, Mr. 2v1. <laughs> you know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We have Fantram joining us once again this week, who is also from the North American WTS team, The Abjured. How are you doing today, Fantram? Good. How's it going, everybody? Pretty good. And then last but not least is going to be Zeus from The Dankening. How are you doing today, Zeus? I'm a real dank, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Zeus is also an elementalist player. All right, guys. So once again, with the introductions out of the way, we can jump immediately into our uh, first stuff here. We'll start off talking about recent tournament results that happened uh, in the past week. Uh, oh, and by the way, a couple a couple notices just about the show in general before we dive into our topics here. Uh, first is first is I originally said that this show was going to be weekly. Um, I think that that's a little bit hard to do with having good shows every week. Um, so the show is actually going to be bi-weekly from now on. So it's like basically been bi-weekly, but now it's officially going to be a bi-weekly thing. Um, basically going for quality over quantity in terms of the shows. I'm um, trying to make sure that each show has a decent amount of uh, discussion matter to talk about with all of our guests. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Also, the show may not be named Meta for much longer because I realized like three days ago that there is another podcast that's a StarCraft podcast that is hosted by Artosis that has the same exact name as this. I wasn't aware of that, no. um, but yeah, uh, I'll be I'll be changing the name of the show. I don't know to what yet, <clears throat> but for now, it's still meta Ooh. until I can figure out a name. The bi-weekly rotation. The bi-weekly rotation, yeah. That's, yes. That's, that's a good one, actually. It's probably one of the better yeah. ones I've heard so far. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. So diving into our first topic here, uh, talking about recent tournament results. So we'll start off with North America. Uh, last week in the ESL North American Gopher Cup, we saw the Abjured. You two guys managed to finally break the two-week streak of your sister team, the Absurd. And you guys won last week's cup. So tell us a bit about last Sunday. What happened there? What, uh, what was the difference last weekend that uh, made you guys take first place over the Absurd? Uh... I stayed in team fights more instead of pushing far a lot. And then we had Toker like at least just threaten far. He didn't even have to go there and one v one a lot. He would just threaten. I mean I still went far sometimes, but we decided to mix it up rather than just me going far all the time. Because there are times that it's really good to have me and Wakey in the team fight to heal each other and just bunker up. So we sort of like adopted halfway EU N A strat and it works better for us against Nasus team specifically at least. Toker, any input on that? What did I do, man? I already forgot what I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think what Fano said, man. I mean, our communication was on point that day. You know, I think just la the last two weeks we weren't we weren't all the way in it, man. But this week we said, you know what? We're tired of losing. We got to do something here. Mm -hmm. um, we came in strong and we left strong. Left flexing, brought the belt home with us, you know. Yep. It's in our <laughs> corner now, so we're the champs. Yeah, I mean, the week before... Uh, it was two to one, and the two games we lost was like within twenty five points. So we knew we just had to improve, just ever so little, and it would make a big difference. So that's what we did. All right, sounds very good. Which means this will put you guys. I think you guys are still second for the uh, qualifying, but you're still easily in range of the monthly, so don't really have to worry about anything like that. To not qualifying for the monthly, just as if you guys are still looking good for that. But of course, moving over to the other side of the pond which was uh, our interest, uh, it's more of an interesting story than it is an interesting result from the EU side of the cup last week, um, where we actually saw the Civilized Gentlemen, the European WTS team, they took last place in the cup, or at least the, the tied segment of last place in the cup, due to some rather ridiculous team drama. Um, I'm just going to kind of say what happened. Um, or at least what I believe happened. This is the story I got from Grouch. I don't know if this is 100% true or not, but supposedly this is what ended up happening last Sunday, is that they were going to play, but TCG has a rule on their team to where if you don't show up for practices for that week's, uh, for that week's uh, like play, then you can't play with the team for the Sunday Cup. 
Now, Sizer didn't show up for practices. I'm guessing, at least, that Sizer didn't show up for practices that week. And because of that, he wasn't allowed to play with the team uh, in the ESL, in the North America, or the European Gopher Cup for that weekend. But he still played with another group. And the sadistic ESL admins on the European side matched Sizer's Pug Team <laughs> versus TCG in round one. And as I'm sure you can guess by this point, considering that they took last, Sizer's Pug Team managed to beat the full, the, well, what would be the four out of five official TCG roster, which is probably one of the funnier results to happen in quite some time. Which That's why. It, it, <laughs> it just made me laugh, and I kind of wanted to throw that out there. I mean, what do you guys think of, like, having a crazy kind of rule like that? Like, what does that say for these guys now? Like, kind of heading, now that we think about, like, how they're going to perform in WTS, and just, like, that things like this are happening. I mean, you got to show for practice, you know? I can see where they're mm -hmm. coming from, you know, where you want you want your full team there. You don't want to, you know, have somebody just missing out and just showing up whenever. But at the same time, you can't have a Mesmer as your only Zerker you know, amulet on the team where they're going to get shrekt, of course, by an SD thief on the other team. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's pretty funny that that happened, but I don't know, man. I guess they were trying to prove a point, but it backfired on them, you know? <laughs> Anyone else got something to add to that, or? Well, Sizer's team was running a pretty similar comp to ours, just with double necro <laughs> oh, instead of double NG. So maybe it's a a bit of a it's a prophecy. Pre precursor, prophecy. Or, yeah, yeah, precursor. Some foreshadowing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Zeus? Uh, actually didn't find out about that until just now. Well, I mean, I watched it. I watched it. Well, that's interesting. That's funny. I watch, like, the finals and stuff. But uh, I think, I don't know. It just sounds like a PR statement. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's none of my business. But I think that TCG has been losing kind of like to just random pug teams or just random teams in general for quite some time now i mean if anything the indication of like from gamescom up until now like it's just pug teams going up against them and they've i think there's like two teams it's like purple smokers and team companion or something champagne they're pretty good champagne yeah, yeah, yeah. Champagne on. yeah yeah so the french team I, th I thought they were beating them or something that's from there's, what i heard there's so. the thing is, is with eu right now there's like a lot of competition in EU. like like an na like yeah. for the gopher yeah. cups it's mainly like it's mainly like like absurd absurd and like kind of you guys too the dankening are like the three like kind of big contenders at the moment but eu's got like i'd, I'd say yeah. probably like six teams that can contend with each other so eu's is just in a, like a really good spot right now you've got like cheese mode you've got main and meta mm -hmm. main and meta is going through some issues though so so they might have broken up from what I've heard, but I don't have mm -hmm. like I don't have confirmation mm -hmm. on any of that, so I'm not gonna talk about that too much here until I actually see something like with solid evidence. I just heard that like two of their members left the team or something. Um and then you've got TCG of course, Champing On, uh Purple Smokers, and there's one other one that I can't think of at the moment too, but there's quite a bit of competition on EU at the moment. Yeah, there is. That's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. Yeah, it's excellent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, interesting results there. So anyway, moving onwards to some recent kind of general news in the tournament scene here. We actually, this was we, this wasn't necessarily news from last week, but this is news from the week before. Uh, ESL announced uh, more details on the November monthly finals, uh, which included uh, some rather interesting caster choices. Uh, uh, obviously, as these are going to be in the these these uh, monthly founders are going to be done from the ESL live studios. Um, they needed people who could be in the live studios. Um, so, with that in mind, they now have and I hope I pronounce his name right. Uh, they have Kalaris or Kalaris from who is a StarCraft two caster usually um, is going to be casting the European Cup with Jebro. And we also have Frodan, who is known mainly for Hearthstone stuff, but he used to do StarCraft stuff too, from what I understand, uh, is going to be doing the North American Cup with Grouch. Both of those guys casted at BlizzCon two weeks ago. So that's, mm. those are uh, some pretty big names there. What do you guys think of uh, that? So we got some celebrities shellcasting on Yeah, some, uh, uh -huh. some celebrity <laughs> casters, Frodan boys. I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, I think it's awesome too. Uh, it depends though. Like, do they? I mean, I'd, I'd say in any game it's like this, but in Guild Wars especially, like if you don't know about the game, you kind of just just yeah. spout and stuff, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm thinking yeah. about. You, know, you have to know the game in depth, and there's so much to it. But... 
to my to my knowledge to my knowledge they haven't played the game before i could be wrong on that though like i don't know them. i haven't talked to them like i'm not really involved in this um like like i do cast the the weeklies in na but i'm not really involved in this monthly at all so i don't really know um but yeah that that could be an issue but i don't know we'll have to see i mean with the tier of casting that those guys are at hopefully uh it shouldn't be too big of an issue but it's still it's still interesting to say the least uh it's gonna be an interesting I, I show actually to asked Grouch. Did he you? said that Frodan hadn't played the game. I don't know if Grouch wants me to tell people this, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he said that Frodan hadn't played the game, but they were gonna play together some like before the tournament, so he can learn the game. Mm. So Grouch will like tell him all about it and stuff. Mm. I think it's fine to have yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. that's inexperienced but a good shoutcaster because it yeah. gives new people somebody to relate to. I guess like I don't know. I, th- I think it's good. It's really good. There's a there's some pretty good examples of like like newer people acting as good casters kind of like act as like a new player i guess you could say from a caster standpoint um what's his name uh red eye does that a lot or when they did the first uh dota 2 tournament that esl held uh, red eye did a pretty pretty good job of kind of acting as like a like the new player kind of uh implant in a lot of the and a lot of the analysis yeah. tests and stuff so it should be interesting to see how that goes that's cool though man there's somebody you know more popular yeah. So maybe it'll give you know some more viewers or something, or get some more people interested in the game. Uh, it could be a good thing. I'm a little bit jelly that I don't get to cast with Frodan, but <laughs> I guess I uh, just gotta wait my turn. All right. Yeah, dude. And You're then... still my fave, Blue. Oh, You're still my fave. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Appreciate that. Esports right. lives within you, Blue. <laughs> lives. <laughs> And of course, the uh, those finals, by the way, guys, those are going to be done on December 10th, I believe is the correct date. Uh, there's no time for that just as of yet, but I think they'll be putting out more details in the coming weeks. But speaking of times for things, more details on the WTS Season 1 finals came out just today, actually, uh, which includes the caster announcement, which is, hi, it's, yay, I'm casting it. And it's, it's going to be me and Grouch, um, but the times, of course, those have been known for a few days uh, those are gonna be. It's gonna be really early in the morning. Like it's kind of obvious that this was gonna happen because it's live in Beijing. Uh, so the time differentials are gonna be wacko. But uh, it's gonna be done at 1 a.m. Pacific time, 4 a.m. Eastern time, and 10 a.m. or just 10 uh, Central European time is when that show should be. Any uh, any thoughts on like kind of how it being early in the morning? Like obviously it's gonna affect viewership and whatnot. But you know, just anything anybody wants to add to that news or. Are you ready to drink blue? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm asking what's, you. Uh, what's what's the drinking age in China? Isn't it 18? Doesn't matter, dude. There's like three billion people. How are they gonna catch you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's <laughs> unfortunate. For, well, I guess for Europeans, it's like sometime in the morning, which I, it's not that horrible. But for NA, it's pretty bad. But I think, and it's unfortunate, but it had to happen because, from what I know, it's actually gonna air on Chinese TV. So they like had to have it at that oh, time. Oh yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, I don't think viewership numbers will be affected, though. I mean, China probably has more people watching it. Um, It'll be on the Switch, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, they have Do You TV or whatever. Yeah. They have a lot of Chinese media covering the event, from what I understand. So, look forward um, to that. Two of my teammates, or k doesn't play with us as much anymore, because he's a casual. But uh, <laughs> K-Pod and SubCutie... Um, streamed on WTV, and they each got like over a thousand followers, like instantly, as soon as they started streaming. So, I mean, there's a lot more people watching it on China than there are hmm. in. NA. I may not come back from China, boys. I may just be a celebrity. <laughs> you, know? you never know. Dude, I know. Sizer, exactly. uh, Sizer apparently is like really popular there, like among Guild Wars Two people, like the uh, the the other Chinese casters that like did a lot of the stuff before uh, Ishana and. Uh, Chris Peke, they apparently like made Sizer like super famous. Like they have all these <laughs> videos on like the like their uh, uh, I think it's called Yuku or whatever, and you can just like translate all these comments and like, oh my god, Sizer's so good! Like in all these comments, Sizer is like <laughs> huge apparently among Chinese people. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. So once again, with that out of the way, we can uh, now move <clears throat> into the the big portion of the stream now, which is going to be. The new patch that was spontaneously announced this week and is just about, like, not two weeks away is when they're implementing this. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of give, like, half the details 
leave some time for reflection thoughts uh, for you guys, and then we'll give the other half of the details. So, um, again, on, I think it was Wednesday they announced it, right? They started the announcements for it? Yeah, it was Wednesday they put out the first blog post on the new improvement patch that they're going to be putting into PvP on December 2nd, I believe, is the date. And it includes a lot of re a lot of kind of, like, necessary features that people have been asking for for PvP. Um, they, yeah. They've called it, like, an improvement patch. Do know, it's interesting to see this not being called a feature patch, like a lot of the other previous ones have, when arguably this one has more features uh, than the last one did. So, at least from the SVP side of things, that's an interesting... Uh, little change that I noticed there too, but of course giving more details on what's actually happening, we'll start off with details on how kind of the more the back end news for the matchmaking restructuring that they're going to be doing um, so solo queue and hot join or hot join sort of won't exist anymore um, PvP is going to be restructured into three separate areas, they're going to change it to practice which is pretty much hot join, in fact I think it is exactly hot join uh, something called play, which is essentially an unranked queue, and then compete which is going to be another ranked queue they're also going to be completely changing the matchmaking algorithm uh, to still allow for solo players to hopefully play with other solo players and team groups to play with other team groups so on and so forth, uh, restructuring to the MMR will also include like, right now, I think they said it's based pretty heavily on, uh, I think they said it's based pretty heavily on, like, your win-loss ratio and your leaderboard position at the moment, but this restructure, uh, according to the post that, uh, I think it was, what was it, uh... Uh, Justin, I think, is the one that made this post, or this blog post. Uh, the restructuring will include things now such as individual class ratings. Uh, it's also going to factor in other things such as your rank as more of an experience indicator, party size, ladder position, uh, as well as composition if you're actually playing with a group or just in general who's in the pool for solo players. Uh, the actual MMR levels or the MMR numbers will not be visible. Uh, the ladder itself is going to be having some heavy changes applied to it, and the fact that it's no longer going to be based on whatever it is, it's based on at the moment, we don't actually know, um, but it's now going to be based on a point system, which was detailed pretty heavily on the blog post they have available over on their website at the moment. Players will gain or lose points based on factors such as victory odds and final scores. These points will be visible on the new leaderboards, which I think is a pretty substantial change to the way the leaderboard system works. Uh, and on top of all of this, all of the technical details behind all these new systems are going to be available publicly. So I would assume this would mean all the formulas, all the algorithms they're using, all the minute details are going to be put on the wiki for anyone to see, which means uh, they're completely changing their stance because previously, um, when they were originally implementing rating, this was eons ago, like late 2012 was when this talk was first put out. They did not want any of this to be public because they didn't want people to game the system. But this has completely been turned around now and and with Justin's post, they are putting everything out to the public on the wiki. It's not there just as of yet, but I imagine once the patch hits, it'll be uh, on there either before that or very shortly after that. And then the last piece of news, before we kind of open things up for feedback from you guys, uh, is that there's going to be a test season to figure out a lot of this leaderboard functionality. So it's going to run for one month, starting, I think it's about two weeks after the patch hits on December 16th, running until January 13th. Uh, there's going to be a test leaderboard season. The top 250 people at the end of this season are going to get a mini llama pet, which is the thing that's been given out like everywhere now. Um, the top 20 are going to get one piece of Glorious Heroes armor, and the top five people on each region's leaderboard are going to get two pieces of armor. Uh, because this is kind of a big change to the system, they want to reward people who are also good in the current leaderboards as well, and because of that, the top 200 people in the current leaderboard are going to get a llama, and the top 20 on both solo queue and team are going to be getting two two pieces of Glorious Heroes armor. So, guys, what do we think about all this? Sounds pretty amazing, man, but, you know, I don't know, what were you talking about? Like, you know, the end of your end game score, you know, kind of calculates how much points you gain or something? I don't really understand it. I haven't read it, read into it in too depth, but, I mean, somebody like me, you know, going far, I'm trying to 2v1 or hold people off, you know. I'm, I may not have the highest score at the end of the game. But I'm definitely but, doing work. Well, I mean, is that going to penalize well, me? Well, it, it, it doesn't affect you based on personal score. It affects okay. you based on, like, the match score. Like, the, you know, like the 500 to whatever. It affects oh, okay. you based on okay. that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited, bro. I mean, I love solo queue, but right now I don't love it, man. You know, it gives me a little heartache here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel I should be top 20 and top 5, bro. I can get <laughs> a solo queue, but I get 4v5s. I get people, you know. Well, I don't know, bro. Just don't really know what they're doing sometimes. But hopefully, the matchmaking will clear that up and we'll get some good matches, and it'll be more competitive. And you know, more people will play it, and you get better quality matches. And I'm happy about it. 
I want to see how it turns out. And not only, not only that, but the like leaderboards to the, to me the leaderboard change to make like the score public that's like a really huge change because now the leaderboards are actually like a tangibly acquirable thing because like right now yeah. you just see the numbers like of like like the like the actual numbers on a list and it's like all right how do I like what how many games do I need to win to get ahead of number like five hundred sixty three or whatever but right. now that they're actually gonna have these scores here and they have this table too here that like shows you like how many points you get that's showing mm-hmm. like you know like it says like for instance if the odds of victory were between 60 to 79 percent and the final score was but, the final score was 4 to 49 like it would be even like you wouldn't lose or gain any points but i really okay. like now that you can see not only what your own score is but the score of like the next person above you so you can tangibly be like okay i need to get this many points in order to like get ahead of this next person. so it's showing their rating yeah you know what i mean it's show- okay yeah it's just so, all, so oh, it, yeah, there's like there's that. two ratings basically there's the mmr which is used to place you with other people in games but that's hidden that's yeah, gonna that's be, hidden, gonna be right? hidden. But that's what i don't like i want to I want something to calculate my rating. I want to go on the website. I want to find out my MMR. And that's, but you know what I mean? I want to find out where I should be at. And, you mm -hmm. know, if I'm going to win this game, I'm going to gain this many points extra because my MMR is so much higher. Yeah. Or, okay, if I lose against these guys and my rating is this full, I'm going to go down. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm going to be hurting so much. I want to, I want to know everything. I want to know my MMR and I want to know my rating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's cool. At least I got rating because I'm all down for that. I love rating. So, my favorite part is the unranked queue. For multiple reasons. Like, in the past, I've always had some real-life friends that are like, oh, you're, like, really good at Grillbush 2 and stuff? I want to play with you. And then when we get into the game, like, it's hard to find anything to even do together in SPVP because I'm like, well, we could play Team Q, but we'll go against all the other high MMR people, and you're brand new to the game. <laughs> or we can go into hot joins and just, I don't know, hot joins are not very awesome right now. It's pretty cancerous, people <laughs> swapping teams and all that stuff. I mean, it's just not fun for me at all. I do it just to mess around. So there was really anything, like nothing. We were we were able to play together in SPVP, but with unranked Q, that'll exist now. So and also like sometimes so playing with my stream, I've always had this idea where I could like play with viewers, and I can do that now too. Or I I could never do that in the past without playing against like other top teams because of my MMR, you know. So that's all fixed. That's my favorite part. <laughs> Yeah, that's really awesome. I, I agree really with Fanta. And uh, I know Toker and stuff streams too, but that's, yeah, that's definitely a question that you get a lot from like people like, hey, can I play with you and stuff like that? And it's just like, well, yeah. um, <laughs> if you want to get wrecked by like the top teams or something like that. But um, I think more importantly, like the, the change with how they're showing a lot more things are going to be visible is uh, it shows that they're changing their philosophy or whatever it is. Um, because they weren't as transparent before, you know, like telling you how you're gonna, like how many points and stuff you'll be moving up or the MMR, what the formula is and stuff like that. It's just like, here's your leaderboard ranking, here's everybody else and that's it, you know. And so just them taking that step kind of shows that there's, there's kind of a different mentality that's going on in the PvP team where it's like, um, we want to talk to, you know, the community and stuff like that, which is good because they... This is, I mean, we're praising this and stuff like that, but let's let's be honest. Like they should have had this a long time ago. So yeah. that's that's good. Can that I was... wear your hat, Zeus? Oh hell yeah, dude! <laughs> Thanks. Baby. You gotta that take was... me to China with you. I like it. I'm a fan <laughs> of your hat, bro. Can I sign your hat? Oh yeah, hell yeah, dude. That was uh, that was kind of my reaction to the original blog post. Was kind of like, yeah, this is all like cool. Like like when they first gave like just the smaller details on it, like the grand, like the vaguer details. It was like, it was like, yeah, like this is all like cool. Like but like you know like. This is, this is basically, like, all right, you're doing your job. So, like, it's basically how I felt for the first blog post. Um, but then I saw the second and third ones, and the second one specifically, I was like, wow, they're, like, actually, like, changing their stance on a lot of stuff and putting all this extra stuff in, too. And that's when I got, like, really impressed at it, because that was, to me at least, that was where I was like, all right, they're actually listening and changing stuff that, like, they previously had stances against. So that was probably the, uh, the best part of it for me. Yeah, I think for SPVP features specifically, this might actually be the biggest patch the game's mm-hmm. seen. Yeah. Like, am I wrong? Like, solo queue is probably yeah. the other biggest one. So I think this is bigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's the biggest one. It's actually kind of crazy to say that, but it's going to be the biggest it's, change. It's like, seen. it's so spontaneous, too. Like, it, it kind of just popped yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's they announced it and it's in two weeks. Less than that now, I think. Actually. I mean, as far as things oh. happening for the SPVP community, the past Month. two months or so yeah. have just been insane. And Gamescom, yeah, yeah, weekly ESLs, WTS, all these features. 
we're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where we're going yet, but we're uh, we're definitely going somewhere. So yeah. it's definitely looking good. <laughs> I think like for me, like I'm actually gonna care about leaderboards now because I can yeah. actually like Ooh. gauge where I'm going. Uh, and, and like and like gauge like how many points I need to get up and above that things like that. It's actually like, hey, bud, I cared before. I, like, <laughs> I, like, like, like I didn't just because it was like it's fluctuated so much. Like like if you're not like below two hundred, like if you're not like yeah. anywhere like if you're me, top, you're gonna win hundred games yeah. in a row. Then you might lose one or two, but like if you're not well, maybe up there for me, it's usually like like because I usually float between like two and five hundred. Like if you're not in the top two hundred, like it fluctuates so much. Like it's just so weird in that area that for me, it's kind of just been like I don't care about it because it there was just like no reason to. But now that they're completely flipping the way it works and it's actually yeah. based on this like tangible point system for me, it's now like, and also right. the DK is kind of weird. Like right now, I don't think they should be giving rewards to solo queue the top twenty because. I mean, dude, I think people are going to log in the last day and haven't played yeah. for a year and a half or something, and they're going to get, like, top, you know, top 20 easy. You see that every day, you know, somebody will pop up there, and they're, like, 10 and 20, and they'll be number four or five. You know what I mean? I just don't think they deserve it. If somebody like me, I play solo queue, you know, every day or every other day. I'm not top. I, I do good. I just think, I don't know. Solo queue is kind of, it's weird, man. Right now, I don't think the leaderboards are accurate for solo queue. Team queue, they're pretty accurate. I mean, I see most of the people that I play against and that I know are good are up there, and I think they should definitely be rewarded. But solo queue, man, I just don't know about that. But whatever. Yeah, I think the uh, the solo queue, it's probably I think that's gonna have its whole set of issues when uh when those rewards get given out because we know everyone knows about the decay thing and how like you can yeah. suddenly like show up on the top like five exactly <laughs> and like yeah. like and you'll have like maybe like 50 games on your record so i've got a feeling that, like everybody some like I, i've got a feeling that a bunch of people are gonna like buy new accounts because that's another thing too is that like people who like often like buy new accounts and they win like five games and then like all of a sudden they're the first player on the leaderboard with like a 5-0 yeah. record i've honestly got a feeling there's gonna be like a few people that are gonna like buy new accounts just to get that armor and, oh like, yeah just do that uh, but best believe the last day or two you're gonna have some sharks in the water baby mm -hmm. i'm there's gonna have a, a squad yeah. going you make that new account baby i'll see you and Team Q, I'm gonna farm you right down. You're not taking me out. I'm staying up there in Team Q. Best believe that. I'm, I'm the shark in the water, baby. I'm coming for you. I smell blood. I smell new blood. I'm coming for you. I'm gonna get you. Go ahead and try that against me, baby, because I'm gonna get you. What are uh, what are you guys' thoughts? Uh, Fans and Zeus and the whole solo queue getting the glorious armor thing. You mean? Oh, like it's all Team Q though, right? So it's really hard for a solo player to get top twenty, I would think. Well, no, 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 no. People that are no, in solo, solo queue gets are getting the Oh, oh, for the, just this one time. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I think probably solo queue. Like, what? It's coming out December when? Second is on the patch. Okay, yeah. Then for like you know two weeks or three weeks before that, I think solo queue is going to be pretty darn competitive. People are going to want that gear. Mm. I don't really want any more pieces of the gear. <laughs> I, <haven't. laughs> I want it. So, but I'm still gonna like. Just the fact that other people are going to be wanting to do solo queue makes me want to do call solo queue. You know, like yeah. if they want to win it, I I want to win it. Yeah. Right. Dude, shout out to Toker, always wanting to fight people. <laughs> yeah. Any day, oh, bring something, baby. I'll bring it to you. Um. Yeah. Like for me personally, like I, um, solo queue is more like uh, like a practice kind of stage or whatever. Like I don't really. Like winning and losing, yeah. Losing is annoying because sometimes you feel like you can play really well and then your teammates are just retarded, so you can't win. But um I second that. <laughs> yeah, dude. And also, I mean, to go with the the glorious armor thing, I don't I don't think it's that exclusive anymore if they're just handing it out. Like it's mm -hmm. in the reward tracks. Um originally they gave it out to the all stars at Gamescom and then they gave it out for TOL. And then they gave it out for reward tracks, and then now they're giving out for leaderboards. Well, which, the, re well, the, the reward, reward track, track is slightly one is, different. Yeah, the reward track, oh, one, is the reward the, track one is slightly different. Yeah, yeah, that's like the lower tier one that doesn't have all the glowy stuff. Very on. slightly different. <laughs> it's like uh, yeah. you get like gems. You get like little gems on your armor if you have the if you have the uh, glorious yeah, yeah. one. Or if you have the I don't know. One. I wore it. It's it's okay. It's 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 not that great. Like they should have more exclusive things. Like I like the whole titles thing. Like titles are pretty cool. <laughs> I'd rather have like a title than armor because armor fluctuates. Titles you can. I mean, I'll take it if you don't want it. If you want. Yeah, dude, I'd prefer it's something to be like extremely visual that if you're just walking around in Heart of the Mist, people know. All right. Yeah, dude. 
Mm-hmm. Like in World of Warcraft, you have yeah. the gladiator mounts. And you go everywhere with those things. Exactly. Or yeah. the rank one titles, dude. You I got the rank one dude. titles. And people's like, oh, I got a solution. That stuff was prestigious. <laughs> that would be awesome. I always You're said, a man, I, I, keep, I keep saying they should make it a cape because, like, there's no capes mm. in the game. But then they uh, also, that would be amazing. They, they would also collectively, oh, yeah. they would also collectively piss off the entire PVE population <laughs> yeah. because they've been asking for that, like, since oh, the beginning man. of the time. Oh man, dude, fuck PVE. <laughs> <laughs> this game's end game is PvP, dude. I want to look like Batman. <laughs> All right, so that wasn't the only stuff in the patch, though, guys. There's a there's a lot more kind of on the front end side of things. A lot of stuff that you guys are actually going to be seeing visibly in the game. It's also being put into Evan uh, just today made a blog post with a lot of that stuff. So the PvP UI is was, is saying it's going to be overhauled. Uh, there wasn't much detail on that, however, besides a few screenshots. So we'll kind of see how that one goes when the patch launches. I imagine though it's going to be not too different, it's just, there's, you know, it's pretty easy to figure it out for yourself based on what they've described already. Um, but moving over to the bigger things, of course, um, before you actually go into a game in the new queue system, um, it's going to do a ready check. This is similar to things that are already done in games like League, that are done in games like Dota 2, that are done in games uh, Counter-Strike, Smite, pretty much any game that has a queue system uh, also yeah. has a system similar to this. So they're going to be implementing that. It's going to include everything from the taskbar notifications, so for anybody that's on Windows 7 or higher, it's going to do that little ping thing, a little orange ping when the match goes off, and it's also supposedly going to have a sound notification outside of it too. So if you're alt-tabbed on Reddit, Twitter, whatever you use, you're going to be able to uh, see that. Um, now, it does say that because of this change, you're no longer going to be able to queue from wherever you want. You need to queue from the heart of the mist, and you need to stay in the heart of the mist too. Like, you can't go into a hot joint or something while you're... As you should. You should be prepared for battle. You should be going on <laughs> fighting <dragon. laughs> Collecting vegetables and fruit, you need to be ready to fight. Me. <laughs> if I get you on my team, you need to be ready to go. I need you. I need you coordinating with me. I need you communicating. Hey, let's do this. I know I need to go. You know we need to do this. Let's, I don't need you off Seriously. in Wonderland and PVE land. I need you. If you're in PVP, you're here to fight. You're here to go. Hey, round it up. Form up. Collecting We're getting business. ready to play. <laughs> And uh, not only are they going to be making this change too, but because of the fact that they're going to be forcing a lot of people to stay kaput in the heart of the mist, they are going to be adding a bank, training posts, laurel vendor, and they, I think it said possibly a couple other things are going to be put into the heart of the mist there as well. Awesome. So it is now going to be essentially a hub. Just I think we might be seeing a few more PVEers there now that they basically have a free hub city which uh, has all those services in it, right? I think that was one of the reasons they originally like didn't want to go for it was because of the fact that LA now serves its purposes and you usually have to pay money to get back to LA. Um, so I think that was one of the reasons why they were hesitating against it, but now they're basically forcing people to stay in the heart of the mist. Uh, this change was kind of required to go with it. So there will be a bank, trading post, and Laurel Vendor now in heart of the mist as well. Not only this, but they are changing the way that Dishonor currently is going to work. It's not going to work. I, I say dynamic, that's not 100% true, but compared to the way it's currently in there where it's like you drop out of three games in a 74 hour period you are banned for three days that's like the only way it works right now there's no variance on that at all um they are going to make it a lot more dynamic than that um and basically yeah. it's going to be like you'll start off with very low amounts of it like five ten minutes i'm going to assume it is um and then from that point it'll get longer and longer and then it has a it has a cooldown period where it'll slowly get less and less again um similar <coughs> to a lot of other games that have things like that too it's just like the low priority q and dota things like that uh you also have similar things like that that are like that in counter-strike um uh, but beyond that just trying to read my notes here uh, factors, actually, for which Dishonor is being applied has changed as well. Usually it's just, uh, you're not present at the end of the game, then it gives you a stack of Dishonor. Now it's being changed. It's, uh, it's pretty damn strict, if I do say so myself. It's really unforgiving at the moment, possibly a little bit too strict, in my own opinion. Um, where basically, if you leave the game at any point, if you decline a queue, or obviously if you're not there at all in the game, uh, for some reason, then you are gonna get hit with a stack of Dishonor. Um... Moving on, of course, there is also going to be something else, too, in addition to the ready-up system, which, by the way, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know if I touched on this too well, but with the ready-up system, too, it's also going to, hopefully, eliminate a majority of pre-game 4v5s, like when you load in and you're missing a teammate from the beginning of the game. That will no longer happen because everybody actually needs to check up before it goes to this next step. And that's what I'm excited about, mm-hmm. yeah. You, everyone's ready to go right before the game. I mean, that's what they're missing right now. You know, Q, if you're high in MMR, your queue may take, you know, five, six, up to ten plus minutes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when they make that change, everyone should be ready to go just before the match. Okay, I hit ready. Well, the game's going to start in 10 seconds. I should be there. 
You know, the only excuse you got, your grandma falls down the stairs or, you know, whatever's going on, you need to go help her. Then, you know, you, you, know, you can go AFK. But other than that, it should be good matches. Everyone should be present in the beginning and ready to go. Because, you know, right now, like just recently, the last few days, and even streaming, I, I ran into so many 4v5s, man. Like just people just don't even show up in the, in the start of the match. And it's just right from the start, you can't really win 4v5. I've probably only won like 20, 30, 4v5s in my whole career. It's not, it's, you know. Yeah, it's not common to win on four v five, so I'm excited about that. Everyone's going to be ready to go, and yeah, good change. And then the last big feature they're putting in is after that ready check happens, there's going to be a map voting sequence that initiates, and basically what that's going to be, based on the description we currently have, is after the ready up sequence happens, you're going to be taken to a map selection screen, and on that screen, you're going to be able to pick from a from a pre pre randomized pool of maps. I think this at the moment can include any map based on my understanding of it, but I could be wrong on that. And basically, you vote for the map that you want to play on, and based on the votes that are submitted, it'll roll the dice and pick one of those maps. So Say, for instance, you have a match with eight people going in, or you have a match with ten people going into it. Five people vote for Legacy, the Faux Fire. Five people vote for... Uh uh, five people vote for Temple, there's a 50% chance of getting either map there. But say if you have like a 5-4-1, there's a 50% chance, 40% chance, and 10% chance conversely to get that map. A lot of people are calling this the death of Skyhammer now because of the fact that they don't have to pick the map. But keep in mind, guys, that there could be that one asshole that votes for <laughs> Skyhammer and the role actually lands on it, which oh, is probably yeah. going to make for some pretty funny map chats. When and if. those trolls. The trolls are there. They'll be doing it. Yep. <laughs> when and if that does happen. Oh, yeah. It's Guild Wars, dude. They're gonna be. They're gonna be out and about. It's like they hunt oh, you. Yeah. <clears throat> they're rampant. And that I yeah, that I believe is the last big right. change being implemented. Listen, Guild Wars community. If I'm streaming <laughs> and you choose Skyhammer. I will shun you on stream. <laughs> I can. Well, you're not gonna know who votes for it though. Yeah. What I'm you're imagining. Not? No, I don't think so. I will find out. Because based on what, Detective based Fan on the, Ram. based on the screenshots we have, it just shows like a wheel of the numbers. It doesn't say who voted for what. I, I kind of want it to though, just so you can shame that one guy. But if not, not it's probably gonna I'll be figure it out. when that map pops. Everyone in the map chat is gonna be like, "Who like, voted for this?" Yeah, yeah, listen, dude. Yeah, people are gonna t say who they voted, and then there's gonna be that that one guy out, and we're gonna know, dude. We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> You're gonna be that one guy coming to the map. Yes, oh, Skyhammer. Take his lunch money. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. He better prep an alibi. We're coming, dude. Yeah. So, uh, how's everybody feel about these uh, front end changes? Thoughts on uh, all this stuff? Oh, dude. Just real quick about the the notification thing. I'm always watching videos in full screen, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm always AFK. Mm -hmm. Like a good like a good ten percent of my solo queue losses is because I'm I'm the one that four v fives. I'm that guy. So Toker probably hates me. But um, uh, no, it's like I I'm like oh shit I forgot I'm in a solo queue and then I um I come back and then it's like oh uh, my team's losing by like 150 points that's cool <laughs> so the notification thing like by itself is real good and uh, oh yeah hey if I'm off screen watching two girls kiss and uh, I see a little <laughs> pop up come up you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go right into yeah. the there we go baby no worries I think one thing they could change since there is a like a ready up feature is uh. Like, make it like a minute wait time after you get into the game rather than two minutes or like a minute and a half or something. This two minutes oh, yeah. like slightly too long if you're, if yeah. everybody's hitting ready up, anyways. Yeah, it is. I think about a minute and a half should be good because you still have those people like actually do like, yeah. kind of strategize and, you, and whatnot. You too. can like change your build, yeah. Yeah, because you don't know like what the comp you have is until you actually get into the game and whatnot. So it's still good to give them a little bit of time to like talk about what they want to do. Any other uh, thoughts on it? What do you guys think of the Dishonored thing? Because I think that's uh, I think it's a little bit too harsh with the Dishonored stuff. Like declining a queue gives you Dishonored. Yeah, I don't really be penalized that, yeah. for declining that the queue. Gives you dishonored but I mean, if you, if you leave, if you leave AFK, you should be penalized. But I mean, declining the queue, maybe if they want to set like a time frame up. Oh, I've declined three, four, five queues in this amount of time. Then maybe I get a little penalty. You know like, what I mean? But. Like, I'm fine with it, like, giving you, like, a time penalty for declining the queue, because, like, you know, there, like, I have played, like, yeah. League before, and, like, you have had things where, like, you have this, like, one guy that constantly, like, declines and then re-queues, or, like, it, well, it might have been up in League, it was some <clears> game where this happened, where, like, it would be the same guy, or, like, the same group of people that would constantly just keep declining the queue, and you were just in this, like, endless cycle of people who kept declining, and I'm pretty sure it was the same guy every time, so exactly. stop things yeah. like that. I you ran give, into that too, Blue. Yeah, you give him, like, a three to five minute cooldown or something like that, so hopefully that group 
group of people at least can get through it before he does I that think again. That, I think that's fine right there. If they can yeah, cool that's down. good. But Dishonor yeah. is a little bit harsh, in my opinion. just Because, yeah. like, you know, if something comes up and, like, happens... At least I got the test period, man. They'll be, they'll be able to figure these things out. Dishonor, like, keeps stacking, too, right? So, like... Yeah, like, it gets worse and worse. If you continuously decline <laughs> cues, you could eventually just, like, give yourself a, like, six-day ban or something crazy like that. Like, Oh, yeah, dude. Your grandma better not be falling down while you're about to solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another thing I didn't touch on too, which actually somebody just mentioned in the chat, was the fact that you are no longer going to be able to, to profession swap once you're in the match too. Now, for clarification purposes, this technically speaking is implemented at the moment, um, or it should be, because it was in the game before. Um, but for some reason, it, like I don't know what happened, but it broke, and then they never fixed it, and like no one cared that it broke. <laughs> but like it was like the weirdest thing, because I could have sworn this was a huge deal. They put this in like, eons ago, and then it broke, but, like, no one cared that it broke. That's the kind of thing I'm against, I'm against about, because, you know, if I get, if I, I play Thief, right, but if I get another Thief on my team, I'm, I'm really quick trying to switch over and play a different class mm -hmm. to better help the comp. I mean, I'm, pretty, I'm good at every class in the game except for Mesmer, and, you know what I mean, I'll, I'll log on Edgy or, you know, Necker or Ellie, depending on what we get, just to help better the quality of the match, you know what I mean? You know, the only other Thief that I really play double Thief with is Cade. I know he's capable. We, we won tournaments together, you know what I mean? But I don't know. It's so cute. We'll have to see how it goes. But, you know, if you get, like, two or three Mesmers, I mean, rip, bro, you're losing that one. <laughs> so, I mean, I guarantee it right now you won't. But, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Maybe, well, wait, like, as them. soon as you get in, like, before the match starts, you can't swap? Or I'm assuming that's you can't swap is, during yeah. the game? I think the reason Probably for this... Probably the pregame, minute and a half you get on it's, the show. It's swap. like... So, so here's the thing, is when you accept... So, so, so we, basically, you. So here's the thing now: is if you leave the heart of the mist for any reason, you'll be taken out of the queue, which includes swapping a character. So even if you click ready, but you swap to a character after you click ready, uh, this is assumably, by the way, I'm just guessing based on the way that most of these systems work. Um, like even if you click ready and you swap after that, it's still gonna like act like you weren't here now, like you left the heart of the mist, you were no longer ready. And even if you do it when you load in. That, that I don't think they've clarified on this just yet, but even if you after you load in, if you now leave the game while you're in the map, that's going to be dishonored anyway because that's essentially a disconnect in the eyes of the server. So you get dishonored yeah. for that too. So that's the I'm reason. I'm hoping you, once you, you get you, higher you, up in the MMR, man, you don't run into that problem. Yeah. You got people who are all respectable, all good players, and you can have quality matches every game. You know like, what I mean? Just like League of Legends, you get a challenge, and you know, diamond. Whatever, you know what I mean? Up there, you're not going to run into all these, you know, trolls and this and that. That's what I'm hoping, you know, when you get the top yeah. tier, you don't got to worry about that. Everyone's ready to go. You know, you don't got to worry about all the stupid stuff. But. Like, I'm I, didn't, go ahead. I didn't read this, but somebody in chat mentioned that it tries to match you up with, like, a variety of classes. Yeah. Is that true? It takes, yeah, it takes, oh. uh, it okay. takes the comps into consideration now when doing the matchmaking. So I like it. Because you, you actually have an individual class rating now, too. You're cl but a it, class MMR. Probably rating. not going to take into account, like, amulets or anything, right? It's just going to do classes. We'll find or, out. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess we don't really know, but... Like, all that's going to be on the wiki, so it'll... Uh, that's true. It, I, it, there'll be some clarification. Uh, more than That would be, like, really impressive if they managed yeah. to figure out a system I'm just that. hoping that during the test period, man, they... You know, they, they see, they notify the problems really quick, see what's going good, see what's going bad, and then maybe they can address it in a patch right before the real seasons or whatever comes out, you know what I mean? Because it's going to be brand new. Yeah. You know, everyone logs in on patch day, and it'll be so many players, hey, we'll get to see how this works out. What doesn't work, hey, maybe we need to change really quick, hot fix or hot patch, whatever they need to do, but. That's, yeah, another, no, no. that's another big thing that I, I, I don't think uh, has really been clarified too well. Cause uh, like, I'm worried a bit about this too, um, but I'm, I'm calm in the fact that this has been clearly labeled as a test period for this sort of matchmaking thing. But a lot of people are saying like, oh, like solo queue doesn't exist anymore because the algorithm is not going to work right because they tried to do this before and it failed miserably, which I'm worried about that too because the last time they tried to do this where they're like, oh, they're just one queue. Like you'll get with solo players if you queue solo. It like kind of didn't work at all. Um, so I am a bit worried about that. But again, it's a test period. So if it does come out and things aren't working right, then you should post in the forums about it. You should make a, you know, like if you know a dev, you should hit him up and be like, hey, this isn't working right and this should work right. Or like, I don't like how often I'm going against team groups if you are going against team groups while you're solo. That supposedly shouldn't happen, but I imagine it. once you get to a certain high echelon, if you're queuing at like 3 a.m., you're probably going to go against like low tier pugs or things like that. 
But yeah, that's a big thing that I kind of just want to toss out there is that they have clearly labeled this uh, the first like month or so of it as a test period. And I think that means heavily, guys, that if there is something wrong or if you notice something that you don't like, you should give them feedback because they are probably yeah. a lot more prone to adjusting things during this first month period than they will be after that. So make sure your voices are... Uh, Voices are heard loud and clear during that test period because uh, if you do want something changed, they're probably going to do it during that period. But yeah, beyond that, any other thoughts on the new stuff or we all good? I think um, somebody on my stream brought this point up earlier, but they're changing a lot of stuff at once. So probably like that first test period, it might that first month or whatever, it might be like really bad or it might be good. We don't know because mm -hmm. they don't have like. And in any game, it's like this too. But in other games, they have like a test realm with like a couple thousand people or whatever. But in Guild Wars, it's like how many people are are playing PvP? You know, it's like do they have a test realm and can they test like let's just say five thousand or something or ten thousand? And it's like is the is the algorithm gonna work? Is my MMR gonna be good? Like if I solo queue in, like have they actually tested it? You know, like so we'll see like how how well it works. But I think. I think I agree mostly with like what that guy said, and I think the first like couple of weeks or first couple of days, it might be, it might be bad, mm -hmm. or it might just be like not very good at all because they're changing a lot of stuff at once. And when you start dealing with like coding and algorithms and shit like that, it's it's got to be real precise because if you mess up on one thing, like you could fuck up a lot of stuff for a lot of oh, people. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure that they yeah. can, I'm sure that they can test for large masses of people, like unit testing and all that is certainly a possibility. I'm sure that they have some way uh, where they can create, like, fake users and have them, like, meet certain parameters and just kind of throw them into this pool and just have them all queue at once to see what happens, test the algorithm. But obviously, uh, that doesn't compare to what's happening in the real world, because that could be a lot different, as I have learned many times, <laughs> and I'm only in second year at the moment in a university with coding. But I'm sure they have tested it in regards to, like, virtual testing, but we we, uh, we'll have to see when this comes out just how well things perform. That's that's probably the biggest exactly. thing I'm worried about, though, is the fact that the uh, of the MR algorithm actually working, considering the shoddy record of that in the past when they've made changes to it of things not really going so well. But hopefully this will be the one, and not even even that. Again, it's all going to be on the wiki. So like, if there's any like crazy like MIT math majors out there that like look at it and they're like, this uh, this uh, derivative doesn't look right. Uh, we should adjust the x value <laughs> to negative seven or something like that. Uh, you can do that. You can uh, make that post in the forums and be like, this uh, number doesn't look right. And if they figure it out, like, hey, you're right. And then, well, you'll get a pat in the back from Aiden, I'm sure. But yeah, looking very good. Uh, once again, guys, that patch is going to drop on December 2nd. So be sure to check that out. I'm obviously, we don't know yet, but be sure to check that out on December 2nd. I'm a bit sad because I don't get to play that patch for like six days after that but yeah same for you should be having soccer. some fun in china bud don't worry I, uh, all right we'll make it up baby i'm bringing my mac i think i'm gonna try to set up a uh which we call it to a uh, vpn i think uh i want to play a little can bit. you play good wars on your mac oh yeah i can play I can let me get some practice in bro <laughs> during the night <laughs> that's, that's, that's what i'm saying? worried about now we'll i'm worried about to, like i'm worried about everybody because they probably won't have practice pcs there so i'm worried about like everybody exactly. trying to come in and use my mac to practice well, Dad, to get some practice on a Steve screen or night or two, you know what I mean? I need to stay warmed up, baby. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but, of course, guys, moving on to what is our last kind of topic for the night. This is the guest topic time. Uh, this is basically going to be a segment where I shut up, and I let the three guests here kind of bring up whatever they want to talk about, whether it's a certain game or a certain part of the game that they don't like, a certain part of the community they don't like, or they like. Uh, if they want to bring it up here and discuss it with our other guests, they may certainly do so. I have a couple kind of filler topics that I can throw in here. We've talked about some of these things before on the stream, but I can just throw them in here if we want to start some discussion. This segment is optional, of course, but again, if there's anything uh, that could be like five minutes long, it could be an hour long like we had last time. So mm -hmm. anything you guys want to talk about? Go ahead. I, got, I want to see who likes me, who doesn't like me in the chat. <laughs> like, chat say, hey, I like you. If you don't, if you hate me, say I hate you. You know, I may have ran into you in solo queue in the mist or something. I just want to know how you guys feel about me, man. You know, I got that I'm going to win attitude. I'm always ready to go, man. You know, solo queue, man, I'm always putting my heart into it. You know, wherever I've met you from, you know, that's, that's probably the most people have met me from solo queue. Otherwise, in team queue only, you know, I'm with my team and I'm facing you, but... If you hate me, man, just say you hate me. And if you like me, say you like me. I just want to see who likes me, who doesn't, man. <laughs> Honestly, I just want to know. Just be real with me, you know? I'll be real with you. All right, I got an idea. I created a poll. 
Did you? You created a pull. What's your pull? Do you like Toker? <laughs> oh, oh, oh! You have a strange oh, pull. Okay. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and vote no real quick on that one. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, uh, I got, I got hey, something. Boom. By the way, uh, someone in my chat just told me about this. The algorithm is now on the wiki. Oh. And nice. it looks confusing Sweet. as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, if they're I, still using Glicko, I think that's like. They're using Glicko, I know well. that. They said that they're still uh, using Glicko V2. Fucking. Like, okay. Alright, I'm not Real gonna quick. be able. Alright, I can read this, but I'm gonna need like 30 minutes to read this. So. No, no, no. Don't, yeah. don't read it, dude. Basically, like, Glicko is used for chess, right? And the reason that it works Whoa. for chess. Like, no, go ahead. I, Wait, mean, you guess I mean, well, like, you're, you're probably leaning towards ELO, right? Well, yeah, but. I mean, like, even, even, like, even ELO chess, was originally used for chess, like, originally. But yeah, yeah. I, do, I mean I, now uh, in the modern times, I'm pretty sure it uses Clicko because there's so many like grandmasters and all so close to each other. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it only works that way. Like obviously, what Toker was saying earlier, like the top twenty of like let's say Team Key or something, it doesn't fluctuate that much. Yeah, it's good because it uses the Clicko system. But like, like what you're saying, the two hundred and like below is complete shit because it's like the the algorithm is bad for them. Because it's just it doesn't work, dude. I, I'm not a math major. I don't know about that. They, but. I actually, I'm looking. At, they actually have reasoning on here too as to why they've chosen Glico over Elo. I know they had reasoning last time too, and no, it no, still no. turned out shit. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. So I just want to read this real quick. Hold on. Give me one second. Uh, so Glico was chosen over its main alternative Elo. Like Elo, Glico measures tracks MMR for each player and updates them by rating them over. To, yeah, that's obvious. Uh, Glico's main improvement over its predecessor is the inclusion of ratings deviation, which measures the reliability of the rating by using RD. The matchmaking algorithm can compensate for its players it has little or incomplete information about. A volatility measurement is also included to indicate the degree of fluctuation in a player's rating. The higher the volatility, the more the rating fluctuates. Volatility <coughs> changes over time in response to how you play the game. During periods of stability, your volatility should still remain low and recipro reciprocally. Uh, the point of this is to allow the system to home in on your appropriate rating as quickly as possible. That is their... Uh, mm. The, the, there's two things I hope that don't happen. Like I don't, I can't read into the algorithm or anything like that and figure this out. But there's two things I hope don't happen. I hope that people don't go 10-0 and then be get get like top five or top one. That just shouldn't happen. Yeah. That's really crappy. And then also people shouldn't be able to AFK for like two months and then play a game and then go back to top one. Like those two things are the only like yeah. everything else about this. The rating system seemed fine. Like without seeing anything, those two things really bugged me. Everything else is good, though. Well, now, Hopefully those actually, two things change. They even say, like, what the default... Like, we know what rating people start at now, too. It even says that here, too. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so Glico is 1 to 5,000, or is, is 100 to 5,000. Uh, what's ELO's max? Does anybody know that off the top of their head? I'm pretty sure there isn't a max for ELO. Isn't there? I thought there is. I'm not sure, but... I could be wrong. Like... I could just, they could have just set that parameter. I could, yeah. But, like, average, like, max is, like, 2,800s around there, I think, is usually, like, the highest uh, people. It's relative to how high everybody else gets. Because in chess, there's, like, people at 3,000 or something. Some shit like that. Or, like, mm -hmm. close to 3,000. Yeah. Hmm. But according to this, uh, the max rating you can have is 5,000. I highly doubt you'll get anything close to that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna peg, not enough people playing, yeah, dude. I'm gonna peg the max at like maybe like 3,200 around there, um, and it starts you off at 1,500. Which if the which if what I know about Elo and I think World of Warcraft uses Elo too, um, and World of Warcraft you could actually see the rating. Um, 1,500 is a really high starting point. Now that I'm thinking about it. Like fifteen hundred. That's, like, that's where WoW used to start a long time ago. Yeah, it puts you like yeah, that's where Wild, Wildstar had you start there. Now that I remember correctly, it Wildstar. I sold MMR in Wild, bro. What? I sold MMR in Wild. You, see, you, you sold I MMR. There, <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't that against one, COS? The big I would two v one people to get their rating up. Yeah. <laughs> they were like PVE yeah. scrubs. You know what I mean? I'll just I'll, I'll just like five thousand gold and I get on their eighteen hundred weapon real quick. Just carry them in twos. I played a mage. I was dirty, game. bro. Like, don't think I'm just good at Guild Wars. I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> that seems While like while I was in the military, hmm. I, I, I sold it more. But anyway, I got I got a topic we can talk about. I went on like this whole goddamn tangent about it when I was streaming like mm. for about a couple weeks or something. But 
basically people always ask me like oh, what do you think the state of the game is like? What, do you think Dagger Dagger Ellie's OP and shit like that? And basically, like, I've been thinking about it, and what it just boils down to is there's just two things that they need to change. And the first thing is that Celestial Amulet has way too many stats. And the two classes that can use it efficiently are NGs and Ellie, right? And that's what's strong in the meta right now. Yeah, because, like, if you total up all the stats for Celestial Amulet, it's, like, about 3,000. And then... Every other amulet is 2,400. So you get 600 more stats. It's like close to 700 more stats. And then those two classes happen to be able to slap on a battle sigil and then like a doom sigil. And then you're just holding 25 might stacks like the longer the fight goes on, right? And so, like, I personally think two things need to change. I think Celestial Amulet, the game was good when Celestial Amulet didn't exist. We don't fucking need Celestial Amulet. I don't know why it's there. <laughs> It's just making it's just making it so that you're pigeonholing two classes to be forced on your team when you don't have to have it be that way. Anyways, and then the second thing is the game was pretty decent when sigil stacking wasn't allowed between weapon swapping and then on crit too. Because the two things that are killing it is like it's not gonna be OP right now, but fire and air sigil stacking is really strong for burst classes. And once it starts shifting away from things that are less tanky, fire and air, like, when you look at your combat log, you're just going to get fucked by passive damage, dude. And I promise you that shit's not going to be fun as soon as you're done looking at it. Because it's going to be, like, 16k lightning strike, 10k fire, a fire uh, proc or something like that. But I think the the combination of battle and doom is way too strong. And, like, on swap weapon sigils need to be nerfed, and then celestial needs to be, like... Nerfed like really hard. Like I hope they nerf that shit into the ground because it's it's not a fun game to play with Celestial Amulet. To be honest, that's my opinion. Fantastic. What do you guys think? I think that uh, affects you the most. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I crit for forty five hundred damage on my silly uh, engineer. I don't know. Yeah, that yeah. well that <laughs> that does may not sound a, a pretty good weird, point. but I crit for forty five hundred damage. That does not have to do with yeah. Celestial Amulet for NG specifically though. That's just rifle and toolkit doing ridiculous damage. Ellie does not hit for that whatsoever. Like fire grab yeah. actually hits just as hard as rifle number three, pry kit or pry bar on the toolkit and the jump shot. And that's a forty five second cooldown and the engineer abilities are like twelve second, fifteen second, and twenty second. But you don't have to delete Sally. You can just bring the percentages um, down a little bit. You know what I mean? Not anyways, too much. You bring it down a little I actually bit. I actually sort of disagree with what Zeus is playing. I mean the fun part that's like up in the air. I haven't been thinking about that because when I compete, that's I just don't think about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Um, Selly Ng and Didi Ellie, especially Selly Ng, are are just like. Well, I would argue that Selly Ng is just barely better than a lot of the other stuff, and it like just barely gets nerfed, and it would be in line with stuff like. It would be fine, but Didi Ellie's a little bit different. But they both just need tweaks, and they're fine. Like, there's plenty of other strong things to take. It's just these two things are just slightly too strong. DDL is a little bit stronger than slightly too strong, but Sally. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Lightning snow. <coughs> Bless me. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there's a few changes that could go through, and Ellie would be in a perfect spot. Like, no stow weapon on the Lightning Whip, nerf the stats on. Celestial a little bit, and like that's already almost enough, I think. Yeah, yeah, but then you're still gonna have like. But like, here's the thing. Here's the way I look at it. might though. Every every comp needs things that can stand on node, and historically, you just look at the things that stand on node, and it's like only complete bunkers, and like it's actually healthy to have more things to be able to stand on node. Like right now, we have warrior, Selly, DDLE. You could go Ranger, but it's slightly underperforming. Like, as soon as it, it starts performing better, it'll be viable to stand on node. We got Guardians can stand on node. Did I say Warrior? No. So, don't. I don't know. That's like <laughs> that's four or five things, and there's multiple builds on each of those classes to stand on node. But in the long ways in the past, everyone just had Guardian. That was it. That was the only thing that stood on node. Or sometimes, like, a a ranger once the Beastmaster meta rolled around, but it's actually pretty healthy right now that we have so many different things that can stand on node. We just need DDLE, the one thing that's obviously stronger than the rest, to be nerfed a little bit, and then you'll have 
a bunch of different choices you can choose for standing on node. Because mm. if you look at NA teams, we all have two, or Zeus, your team has three people that stand on node. But you need yeah. what we need is more choices, because right now it's like so obvious that you should just take DDLE every single time you want a class that can stand on node. Mm. So you need like choices, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just give, let's give thieves two-handed great swords and make the moves real sick. I can fly. <laughs> A high skill cap, but let me like just knock someone up in the so air. So, like, basically, a TLDR of what I'm saying is like it's really healthy now that we have multiple classes that could stand on node. It's just obvious that you should take a DDLE, but in the past, there was literally only one or two specs that you could ever take that would stand on node, and I don't think that was healthy. So, it's good that we have so many options now, and I think Celestial Ammo is part of that. So, I don't want it to get deleted, I just want it slightly nerfed. I like the I like the idea of things being able to stand on node, but uh, the issue is the things that stand on node are able to one v one everything else. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, like, and that's the problem with just DDLE being too strong. Well, so, then how come DDLE wasn't used before Celestial was introduced? Then, like, it wasn't really that because possible. it couldn't stand on node. Like it uh, exactly. Like it just doesn't. It didn't have a good amulet for it at all. Okay, so then you said why is okay? So then, if you if you have it so that it's able to... Okay, this is my opinion of Dagger Dagger Alley, okay? Because when I play Scepter, it's like, what's my biggest counter? And I'm like, oh man, I can kill everything in the game except for like the DLEs, right? Because it's like, wow, why does like something that pertains to my class like counter me entirely, right? Because it hasn't answered everything, right? Because if you... you I know you play Ellie. It's like, you have weakness, you have blinds, you have burn, you have condi, you have direct damage, you have fucking everything, right? And then you have sustain. Yeah. And, so, and that's kind of like the gist of a Celestial Amulet on an Ellie, is you just have everything. The problem is yeah. it's just too strong right now. It's, I mean, it's NG too. Like, I think they should nerf it, but then like, if you take that away, you're still going to have 25 Might Stacks on top of a Doom Sigil. My, my opinion, personally, is I think, like, yeah, the combination... Because if you, if you actually do the math out on 25 <laughs> Stacks of Might, it's like 1,400 stats. That's like another Amulet, almost. It's like half yeah. And so, if you if you nerf Celestial, and then they're still able to might sack and stuff like that, then you still run into the issue of like, okay, well, the class still has like fourteen hundred other stats. You know what I mean? So like, if you bring it in line with everything else, let's just say like the stats come up to. Because I was tell I was telling this to somebody else. I was like, if they take every stat and they nerf it by like eighty or hundred, then it's like close. Like it's like real close to the other amulets. And then you still have twenty five stacks of might, right? You'll still be able to fight yeah. everything, like in my opinion. If you I think, I think a more healthy stats. change would be like take thirty five stats off of everything on Celestial, and then make the Condi damage on Might twenty five, and then nerf Stow Whip and Lightning Whip. And I think actually DDLE will be in a pretty good spot right there, because there's still things that can beat DDLE in one v ones. There's so few good players in this game to like be able to do that that it just doesn't happen very often. <laughs> and and oh, man, I never I don't want to talk about it anymore because we won't say who, but we know who. Because I think it's a player skill issue. A lot of it is. I'm gonna just say it. There's a lot mm. of people that should be able to beat DDLEs, but they just don't because they're not good enough. There's not enough good people in the scene. Damn. Fan of putting people on blast seat. I think. I mean, like, if you if you think about it statistically, because not the same way as you. Like, I play the game, and I don't think about this stuff. But like, when on, obviously, when you're competing, you're not like, oh shit, this this thing is so overpowered. Like, why the hell does it exist in the game? But like, after after you like stop playing and stuff, you're just like, wow, okay, let me think about what's fucking strong and what's weak, you know, and why is it that way? And yeah, like, I just I don't know. I personally think that. It's more dynamic that the game has stuff like you have more you have two sigils now and you have things that you can switch on and off. But I just think like the celestial amulet has way too many fucking free stats. And there's there's no way that you can tell me that like Dagger Dagger Ellie is like it's got such a low skill ceiling too or not not uh, skill point, like to come in is not like so much stronger than everything else. Like if you go yeah. on some random one v one server or something like that, and I would put money on like a dagger dagger Ellie running celestial amulet. Versus any other build, he'll probably win. Like unless it's something like 
turret engine. Minion Master Necro. Yeah. Turret. Or Minion Master Necro. So yeah, other yeah. AFK like close. Right? <laughs> but but what's the issue with like those builds? Those two builds aren't fucking viable in Team Q. Like yeah. turret turret NG and Minion Master Necro aren't viable. Yeah, the issue is you take the next best thing, which is Dagger Dagger Ellie. It's like yeah. the best one v one thing. And then it's also the most viable thing in Team Q. Like it does everything really well. Like I don't want it. I don't want it to make it so that Ellie's are complete shit. Like without the dagger, dagger weapon. Well, if they remove Celestial, they would be like there'd be well, nothing. So they'd be gone. So like, let's assume that for whatever reason, like Selly had to be removed. Like, what would need to be changed on the Ellie to keep them in play? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. a lot. <laughs> like I don't they would know, just, just have to add more stats to some amulet. I don't know. If you if you if you removed Celestial Amulet, like what was like if it what was had, happening with the uh-huh. like, if you just had to remove Selly for like whatever the reason is, like I won't go into without Selly, Ellie has died too quick. Well, that's well, that's what I'm they, saying. They like, would so have to do some kind Ellie, of fresh air berserker build, and then they would have to give him a lot of utility, like the kind that uh, thieves have, you know, like a lot of mobility, stuff like that. Oh no, fuck that. And they then, don't have that. And then fresh air is OP <laughs> well, because it's all instant cast anyway. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it that way. I think like, um, there's still other things that you can use with dagger, dagger. I don't. I think like people are overestimating the weapon set. Like, okay, so if if dagger, dagger, Ellie can't stand on the point as long as it can right now, then I mean, there's Valkyrie's amulet, there's Berserkers, there's Carrion. Uh, Carrion sounds hella troll, but yeah. trust me. Like Dagger Dagger Ellie is just a Condi spec basically. It's like sixty percent Condi <laughs> and like forty percent direct damage. Like you kill people with burning and bleeding. That dragon's breath, bro. Yeah. Like fire number two is what kills people, dude. I don't think any of the other amulets would be viable right now at all. I would I would take something else. Well, if you imagine that if you take away the Selly amulet, the engineers aren't gonna be able to use that too. So then what happens? I th- because what are yeah, you most likely? I feel like yeah, NGs have other options though. NGs like yeah. still play Condi builds. Like for Ellie, it's like in terms of like. And that's my point. Matches, like, yeah. there's other builds that are like pretty close to viable for other classes, at least not for Ellie. Ellie absolutely needs CD Ellie. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, hey, like soldiers is probably soldiers, maybe the best yeah. th- best thing on Ellie, but I don't. It still wouldn't be good. I don't think. I mean, I just think there's more amulet choices. Like, I think. The fact that obviously the two classes that can utilize every single stat is what's making Sully strong, and it's giving them the advantage. And you say yeah. it's a slight advantage, but in my opinion, yeah. it's a much bigger the advantage than possible. Like than than it seems, because like there's there's other core issues. Like rifle is just a dumb thing for NG in general because the knockback is like instant. And put the pin down animation on it. <laughs> put the pin down animation. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, gonna, you know. yeah I'm saying I've been thinking about that for a few days, bro. I mean, that that that's not a bad idea. That helped with the ranger thing, like yeah, that helped out. Yeah, exactly. Like, that one change made that was something I was talking about, you know, as well. Like that one change made warrior really well. Like you basically just need things. Like this is my opinion of it. Like if you make things, yeah, you need counterplay. Like if you you can have something that's super op. Like let's just take a game like you know, Dota or League of Legends. Like MOBA games are popular right now, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like there's some OPS thing or whatever, right? And then you put you put that player against like a pro player, and the pro player plays something that's like much less, you know, OP or viable. Well, like I mean, I'd still put money on like a pro player because like even even if the other thing is completely broken in like certain aspects, there's ways to counter it. Like for example, if you play like let's just say some MOBA game, right? Like you scale up and you get stronger as the game goes on, yeah. And let's just say. You fight something and it's like innately weak at certain points in the game, but then it gets stronger or some shit like that. And then once that thing hits late game, like you're not stopping it, basically, right? Yeah. And so, let's just say like there there's some way to stop it, basically. Like like let's just say warrior pin down, right? Like I can stop warrior pin down if I can see it coming at me. But like how it was before when I first came back to the game, I was like, oh great, his longbow's out. Let me just random dodge before pin down travels extremely fast to me. Yeah, but that pin down adds some counterplay to it. Yeah, but then they added animation. an animation, though. You know, the so animation like, adds some counterplay to it. You can dodge. There's you know? my opinion is like a, a lot of the stuff in the game too is like, especially projectiles. Like let's just say Necro for example. Like they move their hand, and it's like half a second <laughs> cast time. What's the average reaction time of somebody that sees something and then reacts to it? It's like 
not, not that. definitely not like <laughs> that fast, you know, yeah. right? Like, yeah, sure. Like sometimes you can react to it, but still, like go fight a necro. Like you're still random dodging stuff in staff because you don't want to get by chill pains. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You don't want to get hit by the fear mark. Like that's yeah. just dumb. Pretty sure, baby. Like, they should have animations, man. Like, just provide things that have counterplay. And that's just what I'm getting to. Like, Celestial Amulet doesn't provide counterplay because the other person just has too many fucking stats. Like, they have too many free stats for you. Like, you can you can put Celestial Amulet on a warrior build, and it could probably beat a lot of stuff. You could put Celestial Amulet on any build right now, on any class almost, in my opinion. As long as you use, like, 90% of those stats, or 80% of those stats, you'll be fine. And you'll be viable still. Zeus, are you single, baby? Yeah, dude. What's your number, uh, girl? <laughs> dude, come over anytime. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's just my opinion of it, but, you know. So, uh, moving on to something else here. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone, no, no, no. I was, like, does anyone else have anything to add before I, like, kind of throw the next topic? Because there was something I wanted to bring up no. that someone just mentioned in the chat, too. Anything else, Toker? Anything on Silly? Or what are we talking about? Here? We covered that subject. We covered... <laughs> All right, plenty. So this is this is one mainly yeah, for yeah. you, Toker, but to get the feedback from everybody else here too. What do you want, baby? Let me ask me. Uh, what are the thoughts on What are the thoughts on Steel? What's uh, everybody? Steel? Yeah. I mean, hey, if you want to nerf Steel, give me you know, give me some room in another, you know, another area. Up my damage here or there. I don't care if you take away steel. I don't care. I played so many builds, baby. I played King of the Mist. King of the Mist. What was it? King of the Mist. I played double melee. Said dagger, pistol, sword, dagger. I played my own build. I didn't. I didn't play meta. I didn't play uh, uh, what? What we go thirty into trickery. I didn't do all that. I played my own build, baby. I came up from the bottom and I moved my way to the top. And you know what? I earned respect. I made my own build. I won multiple tournaments. I didn't need. I didn't, I didn't need the Cades build. Da da da. Now. I didn't need all that sizer build. No, 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 I didn't need that. I played my own thing, and I did work, baby. And you know what? All that doesn't matter. There's no set team comp. There's no set you need to run this and that. It's about all about who you play with, how your communication is, how your CC chains are. You know, there's so many things to this game that you can bring in. It's not, it's not World of Warcraft. Oh, I got to be a Frost Mage so I can have all the CC and damage. No, there's a lot of things you can do. You're not just stuck on a you know a certain certain build here. There's a lot. There's a lot of things, man. And uh, I hope that you know things open up soon. Right now, there's a few good builds. So amulet, I believe, is a little bit too over the top, but it's not completely over the top. It just needs a little bit of nerf here. Um, you know, there's a lot of builds that I find fun in this game. There's a lot of utilities that I find fun. You know, shadow trap. I used shadow trap for so long, man. I was you know I was one of my few, few people who ran it, and I did work, man. You know. Back when I started, I started playing, man, and it's just I came up, and I just find I, I think back, and I, I just find that when I played like that, so fun, man. I did my own thing. I didn't have to worry about oh, I'm running the spec. Oh, you know, if I don't, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be falling behind these other thieves who are running this and that, and they can whoop me. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just find things like that fun, where you can just you can collaborate with people, you can improvise, make your own bills, and be successful and that's how i was when i first started playing i, I did my own thing man all right that's Penta me. and uh zeus how do you guys uh feel about steel and its current implementation do you think anything should change with it or steel is just like one thing i think the whole thief class is extremely hard to balance and they've done well with what they've been given but i think just the way the whole way the thief class is designed has made it really hard to balance since the beginning so they just have to work with what they've been given basically yeah, I think I think the thief class like because there's a lot of stuff that they do that's instant. Like the reason that most thieves die is because like they don't. <laughs> I personally think that it's because they don't think shit through like when they do it. Because technically, like let's just take sword for example. You have unlimited amounts of ports back through line of sight, and there's so many like points and things in the game that you can line of sight through that other classes just can't get through line of sight. I mean, there's like exceptions where it's like grenades and stuff like that, but you can line of sight through things like grenades won't reach you, and like certain tar like every targeted spell in the game won't reach you. But I think like I think yeah, steel is not the main issue. Like it's the fact that a thief can go through certain like basically laws of the game and just break them, which is like line of sight. Um, steel is like one thing where 
if you press Let that button. Let me stop you, sir. It gives Let me you stop you there because there's other go classes ahead. that can go through line of sight. Judge's intervention. This is one example. You got number two on the Guardian store. Go right through line of sight. You know, it's not the only one. It's it's uh, one of the well, it's one of the only, it's the class that has the most ports on the lowest yeah. cooldown, and the other those classes don't have those things on. So number two is a pretty low cooldown. Depends on which wall you're talking about, because as a DDLA, like every single ability goes through walls. So if it's just like a just that's a exactly wall. Cassid cone cone skills go through walls. Lightning I can web. use my engineer. I can use my number three in the rifle right through walls, baby. I'll put burning, bleeding, and whatever on you. <laughs> <laughs> if I got so that's why like, that's why like, I'll on put the it wall. all three on you. Right through the wall. You know? If it's a big wall, then it's, it's like really nice for the thief. The but if it's not, like, so I think actually for thieves, and I've heard Toker and Sizer and lots of thieves talks about this all the time. They're like, I'll fight them if it's on this node because there's certain nodes that thieves are better on be based on line of sight and like ports and stuff. Like, I think Sizer hates mine because if he's on the like the walkways or whatever, your ports don't always work and stuff. So. Or people can get on the walkways and you can't even port to them. So yeah, Sizer needs to learn to play though, because those are all <laughs> you shouldn't let us a thief that you can't go through that wall. You know. <laughs> you can jump up those things. But okay, so so then what you guys are saying is teleport is like the issue, yeah? But what I was about to say was like I think a lot of the stuff, like the thief class in general, there's a lot of things like I agree with Fanta that's wrong with it. Like the acro the acro trait line, like there's a lot of shit wrong with that. There's just stuff wrong with like the sword number two port in general, how it's like unlimited. Um, s steel, like you press the one button, and it gives you several different things. It does damage, applies poison, applies weakness, and then also gives you three boons and gives you a, like the best fucking like steel, like whatever. Like there's, there's no bad steel. there. You only get weakness if you're in the top trait. Oh, okay, sorry. If so you, then you get poison. You're not that if you're in pitch strikes or you're not. That's trickery. Yes, sir. So, you, well, still, you get three things. Basically, you get what I'm saying. Like, you can get yes, extra sir. things if you want. But basically, it's the, it's the same issue that plagued Thief before when it was Heartseeker, where one button does too much stuff. When Heartseeker before was like, it did way too much damage. It was a mobility move and all this other stuff. But like, that's that's long gone now. Like, I've, they've changed that. But Steel is just another like, Steel is just another victim of just one button doing too many things and. There's a lot of things that Thief have that like has that issue, and so they just need to change the way that works. Like you can make the class as mechanically demanding as it, as you want, but if you give it tools that are just like innately, you can't stop it. Like then, <laughs> then you just can't stop it. Like the other person can't do anything about it. Like one thing, let's just take for example something that I can relate to. Right, I, I personally think that if you buffed like certain things in Scepter for Ellie. Because for a while, like Scepter Ellie was really popular, it's extremely strong, and there's like very little things that the enemy team can do about it. And Steel is an example of this because like the air burst on Scepter is instant, and it comes out before anybody can react. And you can do it while you're CC, you can do it while you're dodge rolling, and it's one of the only few abilities that you can do that shit right. And personally, if you with the focus weapon set right. And you take the focus weapon set, and it has invulnerabilities, and you have invulnerabilities on your utility tree and stuff like that. Now, granted, they're very long, but like, let's just say when I play like Scepter Focus, right? And like I run into somebody, and I'm talking about like good players here. You fight good players, and you have you cycle invulnerabilities basically, and there's nothing that the enemy team or the enemy person can do about you're invulnerable or you're destroying the projectiles. They can't dodge your instant air burst. If they get close to you, there's going to be like a phoenix or whatever. But so just to take for example of that, like what's the counter to the scepter build, right? And it's it's basically like the moniker of if something is really strong, you take something that's stronger than that. And what's stronger than that? And it's SD Thief. Like SD Thief is really good against scepter <clears throat> because you can constantly port back and forth away from the range. Like it's the same thing that works with how right. Mesmers fight Necros. You can't fight a Necro like straight up. And you can't fight a necro in you know like close range as a mesmer. So how do you beat them? You outrange them, right? But and I'm also like, going to interrupt you here, sir. And S Thief, the port only has a certain range, and also there's a window of gap on flanking strike that you can attack them as soon as they're done with flanking strike. You can instantly attack them with everything you want. If you're a necro, you can fear right off that flanking strike. If you're another thief, you can steal right off of that. Um, I, let, let's say let's say for example, I was dueling Cade the other night. I was dueling Cade on my Ellie. 
am I a good Ellie? No, sir, I'm not. But did I guess how many duels I won against K and a thief? One of the what, best DP thief in the game, right? I agree, yes. And I, I won more duels than he beat me in, and I was, an, I was uh, on my Ellie. And if I was going on my engineer, would I win most of my duels there against Cade? Yes, I would. There, it just kind of, I basically, I believe it comes down to a player skill issue. If you're not being the SD thief, I, I don't think thieves are a 1v1 class. I really don't. Because once they use one of their two stun breaks, they're done. They can't sit there and they can't sustain you. Yeah, you can port in and out on a thief. You only re you only have one Connie removal. It is not a, it is no longer a stun break. Back in the day, number two on the sword was a stun break. Now they can't do that. They're sitting there eating your CC. You know, and they're using Sigma of Agility. They only have one stun break. Would it be either Shadow Step or uh, Infiltrator Strike? Uh, I just you know what I mean. If they're gonna, if they're going to take something away from Steel, they have to give something in, in another area because right now I just don't believe thieves are that crazy or out of hand. Honestly, I can be if I can be Cade, I can be any other thief in this uh, uh, kitten game on uh, multiple classes, and I do believe I'm one of the best multi classers in this game. And uh, it's on streams; it's proven. Um, I think I proved my point right here. But I, I do, I do understand what you're saying, Zeus. You know, the number two on the sword. Yeah, you can go, you can go in and out of objects. But what's forcing you to stand right there in that same point? You can move back a little bit. That thief used number conquest. two to an object. He's not a conquest. You can <laughs> pour, you can pour in and you know that thief has to come a certain range through that wall. You back up 200 meters. He's not going to hit you through that unless he comes through. What's he going to do? Come through and spam number one. As soon as he spams number three, let's say it's a sword dagger thief. Correct. If it's a sword dagger thief, as soon as you use number three, use your CC ability. It just comes down to player skill, man. That you know when you know he uses that certain ability that you can counterplay that. And boom, he has. As soon as you CC him, as soon as you, a thief can't eat damage. You know what I mean? Yeah, they have a lot of invulnerabilities, but they only have a certain amount. It's not like they're going to sit there and hold the point against you. And as, as goodness, goodness gracious, I'm on all these other classes and beating the top thief from the game. Well, you know what I mean? I, I don't think they're too crazy. But I mean, I, I am being kind of biased here because I play a thief, obviously. But if they do, if they do, you know, if they take away from steel, cool, bro. I'm, I'm all for that. I don't care. Well, you need to you need to benefit me in another area such as damage or I you know goodness I don't even know man but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think overall though um, at least if you take everything into account that's in the game right now I think thieves are pretty well balanced like if DDLE and like Celestial NG get nerfed a little bit then maybe thieves get nerfed a little bit I don't know how EU feels about it but uh, yeah I think it's Pretty close. I don't really care what EU thinks. They need to stuff their game <laughs> up. They, 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 they coming over on their servers with two to three seconds delay of lag. I can't use my infiltrator strike steel on EU servers. Fanta can't use his burning speed, let alone his burning speed teleport on EU servers. And we're still farming your teams. Uh, step your game up a few steps, then you come back and then you talk. You know, mm. I mean? yeah. There's not many good. Tell teams them. Today. But there we're is gonna make two, this a NA versus E. There is two or three good teams on NA, baby, and we're a force to be reckoned with. You can talk all that trash you want in the stream chats. Da 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 da. When I'm like farming your main teams, you. when I'm farming your main teams with lag, well, then there's a problem here, bud. <laughs> I think you need to bring us something a little more before you come run that wait, that wait mouth for around China me. Toker. Calm down. That's, that's... <laughs> no, dude. This is hyper China. This is good. <laughs> so you need to get people to watch this. <laughs> I'd watch it. The backlash if you lose now is going to be pretty real based on, on that cares, statement there. Who cares, dude? It's good entertainment. That's Isn't that what the shit is for anyway? Pretty much. That and I have nothing better to do on Friday nights, so. Dude, I watch things for entertainment. Like, Toker's entertaining. Yeah, dude. Has anybody watched the fighting game scene? It's one of my favorite scenes to follow because oh, hell there's yeah, so dude. much art. Like, there's so much. Yeah, dude. There's so much drama. <laughs> the so casters much. are the yeah. best because they're so raw. Like, they don't ha they're not filtered and shit. It's like, the that's the complete opposite of the kind of person I am, but it's really fun to watch, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <A> fan, so. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It uh, was, like, a little, little less than a year ago now. I think there was, like, that one collusion in a New York. Uh, there was, like, a New York competition, and they, like, colluded in the... the oh, that who, kind of stuff happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, the guy... Well, like, no, but, like, the guy who was running it just, like, walks in and is, like, get out. Like, like right in the middle <laughs> of them playing the finals. It's just, like, get out now. I don't even care. No evidence. I'm just kicking you out. Like... <laughs> Stuff like that's so amazing. All right. Anything else you guys want to bring up? Or I think uh, we all good? 
I think we just talked about a lot of stuff. We didn't like come yeah. to conclusions well, about shit. We I just mean, brought it up. <laughs> that's that's like what this whole section is. It's just talk. People people like to listen. Yeah. Good good to get some opinions out there. Just some put some thoughts in people's heads. I know a couple devs yeah. like to listen in too. So this was fun though, man. This was a good discussion, man. I think you talk about some positive, and, you know, all the, what's, what's in the, the chat, man. Stuff? I'm reading you I'm reading you guys in the chat, you know what I mean? But I'm gonna be respectful as I can without you know. I gotta say what I want to say because I'm a man and I will say what I want to say. <laughs> Other than that, you know, I'm doing what I do, baby. You know me. It's, it's nothing changed. Yeah, dude. I don't. I don't necessarily have much else to say about like what I think in the game. I mean, I just, I just play it. And it's just things that I was bringing up that I thought was a good idea. But uh, I think we should talk about some positive things that are going on in the game that like. Because we've just been on a rant about like all of the negative stuff, it's hard to focus on like the good things that are going on. I think, I think the good stuff that's going on in the game is like a lot of classes are viable, quote unquote, like right now. Mm -hmm. and, you know, part of that is because of like the new items that they're introducing into the game. Like, definitely Celestial is one of them. But um, I already stated my point on that. I just think it's a little bit too much. Um, and then like the sigils and the way that they work and stuff like that. But, you know, I think that's a little bit much as well, too. That's part of why, like, certain classes are stronger and shit. But I think the way that ArenaNet's moving, like, the events and shit like that is good. Like, they're actually pushing things for PvP. We're not getting left in the dust. Shoutouts for not having a balance patch for, like, half a year. The first two. <laughs> Holy shit. Or fixing block bugs. Uh, oh, so, oh, my God, the block bug. <laughs> dude, this oh. game in the PvP was so fucking bad at the beginning. That was like a thing you needed to know how to do, was you needed to know how to block bug, like, cause that was a bug for like three months or more, like, like, you were not a good guardian if you couldn't, like, trigger the block bug. Like, yeah. I remember when I used to play on teams, the guardian I had couldn't figure it out at first, and we just gave him shit for like five days until he figured it out. Yeah, a lot of this is fun, man, bro. You need to invite me every week to this. I'll show up right on this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I like, I like to have some to variety. I, I've thought about just doing a ridiculous show where I just bring like ten people on and we all just talk about balance, but I don't think that'd be too crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, I, th I think I think we've we've had some good discussions, man. We, I yeah. mean, we're speaking for a lot of people, dude. You know, I feel like we could do like a like. Like, like an episode like once every few months or like an episode like once after a major balance patch where I just bring like I do like an NA show and I do like an EU show I just bring like 10 to 15 people on the show oh dang and, and then just like alright guys what happened like <laughs> and then just talk about it but do it like do it like a week or two after the yeah. patch when like people have had time to like actually like see what's happened in the meta you know I got your back baby whenever you want me on here I'll be here <laughs> yeah alright so I think uh I think that's starting to bring stuff to a close. Any other uh, positive stuff we want to talk about? Or has, uh, has Zeus wanted to bring that stuff up? I don't know. I think I think the game's going in the right direction. It's cool. I enjoy playing it, basically. It's... Oh, shit. Actually, one thing. This new leaderboard stuff, all this stuff is really good for good matches, which I'm all cool and down for. But for other people, they need, like, incentive. So, like, yeah, the leaderboard can matter and the numbers can matter, but do you get anything out of it? Because, like... Right now, you're about to get, like, two glorious armors or whatever. And that seems small. That seems like a very small thing. But, like, in the last two weeks or whatever, people are going to go hella hard trying to oh, get yeah. the top 20 in each one. Titles. And so I think if they, they make this new leaderboard and it's all good and dandy and stuff, but they're missing the other component, which is, like, yeah, you fixed <clears> the leaderboard. Now you need to give people a reason to play the leaderboard. Because if there's not a difference between the rank 1 guy and the rank 1,000 guy between what they get in the game, like, or what they get, you know, for being that, then uh, it doesn't really matter still, you know? Like, I'm all down for good matches, so, me personally. So I don't really care. Same here, bro. All right. But other people will, like the casual community and, like, the semi-competitive community will. I want to give a shout-out to, like, how healthy the EU scene is at the moment. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> like... Seven teams, six, seven teams. When has there ever been that many teams that can compete with each other? Like never. That's yeah. <laughs> I, I that's can, impressive. Like, maybe it could launch. be an issue of not having one team with dominant players. You never uh, know. Oh, I don't know, man. 
There's uh, yeah. quite, a, quite a few shots. We have an only NA stream. Man. There we go. We'll have to keep some variety in here. We're doing all EU stream next week. We'll have to see. Hey, I'll send the shots, baby, and I'm ready to back I it keep, up. I keep trying to get Hellseth on here, but he keeps saying he's busy. So. Hellseth's about a quarter of the man I am, so <laughs> he, can, he can sit in the background and play with his hamster. He can sit there and play Clue with his boyfriend. You know what I mean? It's nothing to me, man. <laughs> Hells has a quarter of the man I am, so he already knows that. Shots. All right, guys. Well, I got I got, I got one question. I just want to toss it out there because um, I'm interested to see if this would be a thing people would maybe want to do. How uh, how inclined would you guys be to do a buy-in tournament? I would do it. That sounds fun. What so are we doing? In Toker? Like a buy-in tournament. Right. Where you, where you have to pay like you pay to get in, and then you get the prize. Yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll do it, man. I don't have anything for it, man. Any- I, I enjoy tournaments. Tournaments are fun for me, man. They get mm-hmm. my motivation going. They get my blood pumping. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Man, I, hey, I enjoy them. I'm, I'm, ready. I'm all for that, man. I don't care. Whatever. Maybe let's do it. I also- as long as I got uh, some strong teammates and I know I'm confident, I'm ready to go anytime. I also want to phrase a question to the chat, too. And again, this is completely just me thinking about things at the moment i'm not planning anything yet but i'm thinking about maybe planning something so people in the chat if there was a crowdfunded tournament would you contribute to it and if so how much oh we need a straw poll again interested well i mean that's this more of a i want to see what people are <laughs> you saying you guys are in the, the crowd i'll run around shirtless baby i'll, I'll sign on with that. <laughs> you got you got you got all me baby i'll jump in the crowd we'll do a little wave i'll jump you guys can carry me through the crowd you know what i mean i'll go here for that shit man because uh, like i don't know like i want there to be you can, more. Sign, you can touch the biceps you know what i mean there's yeah, all no, kinds no, of good things no no like i want like like no the reason behind this is i want there to be more than just like because because right now we like right now we have wts maybe yourself that's good that's cool like that's that's great because that's a consistent scene that's what we needed for a while but on top of that i'd also like to have like some other events too that also now have a decent cast prize and other people can play and things like you know like you know like Dota 2 is like d2l and things like that like just like side tournaments that smaller organizations run like i still run miss pedia miss pedia's mm-hmm. Like, we're working on Miss Pedia 2.0 right now. Not only that, but, like, we're not really doing anything else event-wise um, because we're not doing, like, TOL or TOG right now. Um, and, you know, like, beyond that, like, we just do the weeklies, which are easy enough to run. So, thinking, thinking about maybe doing something like that. But I'm kind of just trying to see if people would be interested in something like that right now. Yeah, just like in other games. I see all that all the time, you know. The people have a little private tournaments, you know what I mean? They kind of promote their own thing going on. I think that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, like, what would you, like, uh, Zeus, and, like, would you be interested in doing something like that? Like, just random thoughts. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd be down for a buy-in tournament or any type of tournament. It just, it's good just to have tournaments in general yeah. that are, like, streamed, because people want to watch that kind of stuff. Like, as, as fun as solo key streams are all the time, it's not always what people want to watch. I think a lot of people, um, like to watch the highly competitive stuff, so if you get, like, a bunch of good players together, even if it's, like, I Something think... small, like the gems in Mispedia. You get some good games out of those games. Yeah. Like when they weren't, um, like before the ESL thing. Because I'd only played in one of those, so I don't know how competitive it is just yet. ESL is really competitive in EU, but NA, it's it's like, it's kind of getting there, but it's like, not there yet. Like, NA is still, it's still generally the two teams. It's still like, yeah, absurd and absurd they'll get there really. eventually. Yeah. It's just like... EU is pretty damn competitive, though. Like Yeah. Yeah. Well, those teams have been around, like, forever, dude. So, I mean, I'd expect them to be good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see uh, based off of that. Thinking about it. Maybe Invitational as well, just to kind of see. But I'd like to do something special again. Because it's been a while since I've, like, done a big thing. And uh, Winter Break's coming up soon for me. So, And that's, like, a month break for me. So, we'll see. Sweet. Anyway, though, guys, uh, I think we are going to bring the stream to a close now. So once again, thanks to all of our guests for tuning in. If you guys have, you guys have any links you want to toss out to uh, people watching, you know, Twitches, Twitter. Am I getting a big hug, Blue, when I see you in China? Oh, of course, <laughs> dude. I think I think, Ostr- hug, I think Ostrid's gets one first, though, because I'm pretty sure... Hey, we're going to do a big group hug. <laughs> you know? I love gummy bears. I had to say that to some one of my, my friends out there. I love gummy bears. <laughs> Any other uh, stuff you guys want to toss out to the chat, Fanta Zeus? 
Uh, oh, Twitch links, Twitter links, Facebook. I haven't had a lot of motivation to stream lately. Like, okay, here's the order of things I would like to happen to stream. I would play a game, enjoy something, and then stream it. I I I enjoy scrimming and tournaments in Guild Wars 2, but I can't exactly stream all my scrims because I don't want to like give away stuff. And tournaments are already streamed, so I don't stream any of that. Like basically, when I log into Guild Wars 2, I just sit in Heart of the Mist and do nothing. <laughs> that's, that's what everyone. Oh, yeah, so uh, do there's nothing for me to stream. You know, like when I do stream, I do solo queues because I want to provide content. But when this ladder leaderboard or not, like, all this stuff comes out after we get back from China, I'll be streaming more because I'll be wanting to do something. Like, I want to do the, you know, get the top ratings and all that stuff. So, yeah. There'll be, uh, I'll be streaming more after that. So then the order will be, I play Guild Wars 2, I have something to do, and then I stream it, rather than I get on Guild Wars 2, do nothing, and be like, well, I want to stream, and so I solo queue. That's, that's yeah. oddly similar to what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sat in hard like all day. <laughs> a lot of us do that, dude. A lot of us do that. Zeus, anything uh, you want to toss out? Uh, no, not really. Just thanks for having me on here. The discussion was good. Looking forward to playing you boys and NA and stuff like that. Just having fun, dude. For sure. All right, yeah. guys. Well, that's going to bring us to a close here. So thank you all very much for tuning in. Thanks once again to Fantasy and Magistoker and Zeus for joining me for tonight's show. Be sure to follow the Twitch channel for more updates on the next episode of Meta. Please note that the next episode of Meta might be... Uh, first of all, next episode of Meta probably isn't going to be named Meta anymore. Uh, also, the next episode of Meta might be delayed because of the fact that it's going to coincide with the Chinese WTS. So obviously, considering I can't do it from the event itself... Uh, there will not be an episode that week. I might try to find someone else to host it for me, but uh, I'll have to kind of wait and see on that one. If not, it'll be returning probably the week after China, so look forward to that. And Toker, what are you doing? <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> okay, beyond that, uh, you can also go ahead and follow the show on SoundCloud if you aren't able to watch the VODs via video. You can go ahead and watch the audio VODs. It's going to be over at SoundCloud.com slash meta-podcast. Um, you can also go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel where the VODs are available there. There's a link down below. You click the info button. It'll take you back. Hey, Blue, before we go, bud, I got a few shout-outs for the we'll go, fans. We'll they want to see some Biflex flexing, man. Mm. Got it for you, baby. Mm. Uh, I'm always here for you. Magic Soaker loves the community, man. I love all the people who watch my stream and are here for me, man. I support me, so love you guys. I'm going to have to close my camera now because i got to handle some business. But, uh, you know, here you go, baby. Magic Tucker's here for you boys and girls and ladies, you know, especially the ladies. But I'm out, boys. Take it easy. Goodbye, everybody. All right, guys. See I ya. will catch you all later once again. Once again as well, if you guys would like to help out and support, there are links down below that instruct you on how to do so. But thank you all very much for tuning in tonight, and we hope to see you next time for Meta Episode 3. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you later. <laughs>